What's going on guys, Matt here from Become Elite and today I'm gonna to strike the ball different ways, really slow it down and really dissect the different techniques on how to strike the ball. So the first technique I wanna go over is the chipped long ball. The chipped long ball is a great pass to do, especially when you're in the back half and you need to get it forward, you need to get it out and clear the danger, but you also wanna put a lot of height on it so that your team can get forward and get pushed out. Um, so the technique that I really wanna go over, if you can see, is that as you're coming in, your body is definitely angled, just like a normal kick. Most of these kicks are pretty angled. You have about 10 inches away from the ball and then when you're striking the ball the main thing that i want to go over that i hope you guys can see is how pointed the foot is and how the heel is really gliding across the ground so the heel is very very low on the ground your cleats of the back heel are almost brushing against the turf so you can really see it in this angle right here um, and this is how i go over all the kicks i think that the body and your body shape is secondary to how you're striking the ball and the angle of your foot so if we pause the 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 screen right when I'm making contact with the ball, you can see that my back heel is almost flat against the ground. It's very pointed and it's just skimming across the turf. And you'll definitely be able to see the big differences when we go into different kicks and we compare the foot angle and the contact point on the ball. The second technique I wanna go over is more of a driven long ball. So you can see the height is just slightly lower than the chip long ball, but there's a lot more power. It goes a lot farther and there's a lot less backspin on the ball. There still is backspin. You're still getting pretty good height, but the main thing is that this is going farther with a lot more power. So if we break down the technique, the things that you're gonna notice that are different from the chipped long ball is that one, I'm not leaning back as far. So you can see I'm closer to the ball. If you watch my plant foot, it's about three or four inches closer to the ball than on the chip long ball. This lets my knee get a little bit over the ball so I can get a little bit more power on it and not just sweep underneath the ball. And then if we watch the contact point, we compare this to the chip long ball, you can see that my heel is just ever so slightly up. I'm not leaning, leaning as far away from the ball and this is gonna help me just hit slightly higher up on the ball to get a little bit more power and not just brush underneath it. So if you watch the power, you can see that the ball really is booming off of the foot it's going much farther and it still has that height and a little bit of backspin. If we zoom in and we really look at the contact point on the ball, you can really see the backspin. You can really see that I'm still kind of brushing underneath the ball, but it's a lot more solid of a contact than on the chip pass, especially if we pause it and we break it down and we compare it to the chip long ball right at the contact point, you can definitely see the difference. So right there on that slow-mo, you can see how my heel is slightly up. I'll go back and I'll pause it right at the contact point so you can really see but just that tiny little inch or a few millimeters or centimeters of, of, of difference of how that contact is on the ball is going to make all the difference. So as you can see, I'm comparing it to the chip long ball and the long ball. The heel is just slightly up. So that contact point is maybe another inch higher on the ball. And that's what's going to really drive it farther and give you a lot more power. It's tiny, tiny differences, but it's big. The third technique that I want to go over is like this low driven pass. And this low driven pass is a very difficult pass to do because it's hard to get that much power where the ball can travel about 40, 50 yards uh, while also keeping it low. The ball shouldn't really go above head height. It should go in a straight line. and should have a lot of power and a little bit of backspin on the pass. So I'm going to break down the full technique of the ball. But again, the main differences that you're going to see is just about the contact point on the ball and how turned over that heel is when you strike it. So again, if we're looking at my body position as I'm coming up to the ball it's almost exactly the same as the chip long pass and the driven long ball maybe there might be a little bit more of a lean so I can get my foot or my heel a little bit more turned over um, but at the same time 
I am a big believer that it's more about this right here, the contact on the ball. And if we watch this and we look and we compare this to the chip long ball, you can see how this heel is almost higher up and the whole leg is turned over and rotated so I can and so I can drive the ball a little bit lower and a little bit harder. Just that little two, three inches of where you can see the bottom of my foot there is going to really allow the ball to stay low when you hit it. If we compare it to more of the driven long ball, you can see that the heel is closer you can see that the heel is coming up a little bit more than even the driven long ball but still it's just a matter of inches it's a matter of centimeters on honestly so these tiny little differences of how you're rotating the heel how over the ball you are how much you lean is really going to alter the flight path of the ball a ton but it's all about how turned over your knee is and where you contact on the ball with the which part of your foot so here's a really good angle to see that i'm going to bring it back and i'll compare and contrast it to the other two styles of kicks that i've already shown you but again you can see on the very slow-mo here the heels up the contact points a little bit higher on the ball than usual and as always i'm landing on my my shooting foot um, but as you can see, as I pause it right here, you can see that there's probably about two to three inches underneath my heel. You can see and compare it when you're doing the chip long ball, just how much higher I'm striking the ball and how much more turned over my, my heel is because you can almost see the, the bottom of my cleats when I'm on this angle. And here at the driven long ball, it's, a, it's very similar to this driven pass, but you can see I'm still a little bit more over the ball on this style of kicking and being a little bit over it, having the heel a little bit higher and contacting the ball a little bit higher up on the ball is gonna drive it and keep it a little bit more lower than the driven long ball. The fourth technique I wanna go over is the driven lace ball on the ground. This is a fantastic technique to be able to master, especially as you go up higher and higher, because you can deliver the ball over long distances, 30, 40 yards, while keeping the ball in the pass perfectly straight and making it easier on your teammates to trap the ball since it will be on the ground and not in the air. This is something that you have to master if you're a goalkeeper, center back, even an outside back, and I think even if as a center mate in most positions on the field. This is such a crucial pass to master and be able to accurately and consistently hit to your teammates. So if we break down the technique, again, it's slightly different as you, you know, you're slightly in front of the ball, your foot might be three or four inches forward, your plant foot that is, but again, the whole, all the techniques that you run up is gonna be very, very similar. Again, the main differences that you're gonna see is the contact on the ball and, and how your foot is positioned as it's striking the ball. So as you can see, maybe there'll be a little bit of differences between the kicks, but I think that's negligible. I think this is what you have to focus on. Look at the difference of the heel, how much higher up the heel is compared to the chipped long ball. It's almost three inches, four inches up and turned in. So you're striking it more on the laces than you're striking it more on the instep actually with this lace pass. It's just so much more on top of the ball and the contact point on the ball is so much higher. So as we're comparing it through these kicks, you can really see the differences of the contact point, how high the heel is and how turned over the knee is. One thing that I really noticed even comparing it to the last kick, this one right here, is that I actually made contact a little bit lower down on the laces. When I'm doing this one, this is more up on the laces and then this one is just slightly lower on the laces. I don't know if that is just because of this exact kick that I did in this session or if that's what I usually do, um, but just something to notice. But here, chip long ball, driven long ball, a little bit more of a driven pass and then we have the laced on the ground ball. So just slight tech, I mean, it's hard. I know how frustrating it is to try to learn these and how hard it is to really master these and consistently hit these. So you just have to go out and practice it for yourself and find what works for you. Here's the different angle. Really you can see the contact point on the ball as we go through this kick and keeping it low on the ground. Um, and like I said, this is just my style and technique of hitting the ball. I've played with pros and other people who have slightly different techniques or something that goes through their head differently as they strike the ball. It's kind of going to be out. It's kind of going to be about going out to the field and getting these points in your head, but then also trying to figure out what really works for you and what you need to have in your head when you're going up to kick these balls over and over again as little signals on how to do it. But 
Look at how much higher the contact point is on the ball for this kick versus the chip ball. This one, I'm, I'm driving almost in the center of it versus while the chip pass, you're kind of sweeping underneath it. The heel's like three or four inches higher. And then even comparing this to the driven long ball, you have about another inch higher up on the ball. Your heel is another inch higher up and it's just really driving the ball and hitting it more of the center of the ball so it stays lower versus hitting lower on the ball and popping it forward. So very, very small differences. Again, I know I sound like a broken record Record, but honestly you have to have this ingrained into your muscle memory so that you can go out and and just have it so you're swinging through the ball and you know exactly where your heel is everything's positioned so you consistently hit a long ball versus a driven ball versus a lace ground pass everything needs to be perfect and you need to ingrain this in your muscle memory over years and years of practice the last technique I want to go over, I think, is the hardest technique to master. This is going to be the knuckleball or like giving even a little bit of top spin on the ball. This is insanely, insanely hard to do because you need to hit this ball perfectly. Hitting it just a millimeter, a centimeter lower than what you have to is going to cause backspin. Hitting it a little bit, a centimeter upwards on the ball, too high on the ball, is going to cause you to flub the kick. And if you hit it a centimeter into the left or a centimeter into the right, you're going to spray it so it's going to fade or it's going to curl off off in a different direction. So as we go through the technique, the thing that I want you to notice about this is that I'm closer to the ball and I'm not leaning as much, especially compared to the chip long wall. I'm about maybe five inches closer to the ball on this knuckleball kick and I'm definitely a little bit more upright. But again, as always, I think that your body position as you approach the ball and your follow through are all secondary to how you strike the ball. I think this, especially with the follow through, people always say that if you wanna chip the ball up, land on your plant foot, and if you wanna drive the ball to land on your shooting foot. But if you guys watch this and you go back to the very first chip pass I did, I still landed on my shooting foot. It's all about this, the contact on the ball. So watch how much more over the ball my knee is, how much more over the ball it is compared to the chip long ball. I'm more over it. And the other technique or the other aspect I want you to see is where I'm striking on my foot. I'm a lot more closer to the ball and I'm striking right dead in the center of the ball with the center or with the bone of my laces. So even compared to this kick, you can see that I'm kicking it or I'm striking it a little bit closer to the ball. My whole body is about an inch or two inches closer to the ball and I always imagine these kicks like punching the ball right square in the center of the ball punching it with the hard part of my foot so that there's going to be no spin at all I'm not sweeping underneath it I'm really just trying to whip my ball or whip my foot through so the hard bone part of my foot of my laces is going to contact right dead center in the ball and that's how I really like to imagine it when I'm doing it but again as always that's what just goes through my head that's what helps me and I think that you really need to go out and again, practice this 10,000 times so that you have your own little cue points that you like to do so that you can knuckle the ball. But a fantastic technique for any shot, shooting on goal, any type of kick like that that you want to, uh, want to do in a game. I just want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. What you find just might surprise and inspire you. If you guys don't know Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real life projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. I think a ton of you guys could benefit from classes like Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last, taught by Thomas Frank, or DIY Cinematography, Make Your Videos Look Like a Movie, 
for any of you guys that are interested in YouTube videos or creating films or any type of videos like that. One Skillshare class that really caught my eye when I was browsing through the list was social media marketing, top tips for growing your followers and going viral. I think that could be a great class for me to grow my business and become elite through social media. Skillshare is also extremely affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes or workshops. An annual subscription on Skillshare is less than $10 a month. So if any of you guys are interested and want to check out Skillshare, click the link in my description and you'll receive two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. Thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring the video. So I really hope that was helpful. I hope you guys can really see the differences between all the kicks. Again, it's very, very minute technical changes, but those slight changes affect the movement of the ball tremendously. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace. <laughs>